Well, good day, everybody. Today, I'm so excited to bring to you the High Desert Garden Flow Through Worm Bin. This is a worm composter or a vermicomposter, and I might have to shorten that name a little bit. Uh, we might just call it the HDG Flow Through Bin. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and show you all the different features of it, uh, how it works, and also the estimated cost in building it. Now, it cost me, I'm certain, around $70 to build it. I, I will add up the cost and present those to you uh, probably at the end of the video. And there's some optional things that I added that cost a little bit more money. So you could probably get the cost down of this even further. Uh, but I told you in my previous video, I'm a perfectionist. I like to make things look nice. I use uh, cedar, although I use the cheapest form of cedar that I could find, which was cedar fencing. It is a very rough cut cedar, so there is a little bit of work to do with that as far as sanding and that sort of thing. So it's all cedar. Uh, for the harvest bar, or what I dubbed the harvest bar, I used a copper uh, water pipe. And it was only five dollars, but you know if you wanted to you could probably find a, a harvest bar for 50 cents out of a different type of material um, But I will go through and explain everything To build the bin I used 12 cedar fence boards that were five feet in length and I also purchased 10 two by two pieces of cedar, but only ended up using eight I used about one third of a pound of inch and a quarter wood screws, maybe one foot of quarter inch drip irrigation, and an inch and a half length self tapping screw. A 40 foot length of weed eater string, 2.4 millimeters thick. Two washers and collars that I found in an electrical department that had half inch centers. A small piece of whiteboard or dry erase board, some small hinges for the lid, and a half inch pipe about two feet in length. In this case, I used copper. The first step is to cut your pieces to length. For my bin, I chose a width of 28 inches and a depth of 18 inches. I then put together the two sides that are 18 inches by about 33 inches and I put them together using the 2x2 two two pieces of cedar cut to 33 inches. Once the side pieces were done I was able to start adding the lengths. At this point the bin really started to take shape. Now it's time to add the flow through system which will separate the worm home at the top of the bin from the harvesting area at the bottom. So at the midway point we're going to put a 2x2 two two piece of cedar which will also be a brace and a way of holding the weed eater string in place. I attached my 2x2 two two brace with some L brackets that I had. However this can be done many different ways. I then drilled holes about every inch and an eighth. Once the bracing was added to both sides, I then took the 40 feet of weed eater string and weaved it through each side, going all the way through the bin, back and forth. Here's what it looked like inside the bin with the string in place. To build the harvesting bar, I took my 1.5 inch self-tapper screws, I covered them in 1 inch of drip irrigation line. I spaced them about every inch and an eighth and screwed them into the copper pipe. Here's the harvester bar in action. Note that the weed eater string sits just above the harvester bar. As it turns, the screws will penetrate up into the worm bedding about an inch, harvesting the castings. I then built a simple lid and attached it with the hinges. 
The white board is screwed to the bottom of the bin in each leg. This also helps to keep the bottom of the bin square. Using a piece of tarp and liner that I had, I decided to line the interior of the bin. The liner is cut to 15 and a half inches wide by 7 feet long. It is then stapled carefully to the inside of the bin. To prevent the staples from rusting and the worms from hurting themselves on them, I decided to use a non-toxic swimming pool sealant to cover the staples. Last, I built a little door for the harvesting area. Starters, this is the front of the bin. And this is, as I was saying, the harvest bar. And all you've got to do to harvest the castings is roll this bar from one end to the other. And I'll show you what it does on the inside. Now, I will end up putting a knob or a crank or something of that nature on the end of this. Now, the harvest bar does stick out the other side as well. And there can be a knob or a crank on that end. You can actually grab this harvest bar with two hands and you can move it back and forth and you can scrape the underside of the uh, the worm castings to knock them down and harvest them. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and show you the door. Here is the door. Uh, notice there's no hinges or anything. It just comes right off. It's actually held on there by magnets. All right. So all this area down here is where you can put a tub and you can harvest your worm castings. And as I said before, it's just held on there with magnets, just like that. All right, uh, here's the lid. Just very simple. A couple of hinges here. Works great, looks beautiful. So I'm gonna go ahead, bring you guys in closer show you close up what we've got going on here. All right, so here's the bin. As you can see, it looks very, very nice. Let's open it up, take a look inside. I did add some spacers here, and this is to get more ventilation to the top of the bin. The hinges in the back are also raised up about an eighth inch to give you an eighth inch gap all the way around the lid of this bin. All right, I'm gonna go turn the bin this way so we can lay that down. Now this bin will be up against a wall uh, when I get it inside. So you won't have to worry about the, the lid falling off there it'll just rest against the, the wall when it's open now I did add a liner to the area where the worms will be in the bin here and that's because this is cedar and I didn't know how well the worms are going to deal with having their bed being up against cedar um, this is actually pond liner or the liner that I use for pond uh, things of that nature so it is absolutely fish safe and therefore should be worm safe and completely non-toxic so there again is the harvest bar and it will rest right here in about the middle of the bin and these uh, weed eater strings when this is full of castings will rest right on the top of that harvest bar so that a harvest bar will provide additional support right down the center so that uh, those weed eater strings don't get to sagging in the center and then when you're ready to harvest it's very simple I did use a drip irrigation hose. This is quarter inch drip irrigation hose on top of the or over the screws kind of like a sleeve. Uh, I just wanted to in case there are any worms still 
in the bottom of the bin. I wanted to make it as safe as I could. And plus, I think it just looks nice, you know, better than just looking at some screws or some threads on screws. But that's how it works, as you can see. You have about an inch there where it'll actually scrape the bottom of the castings. And if these screws don't prove to be long enough, I can always change those out for some screws that are a half inch or an inch longer. But I think they're going to be just fine. Down at the bottom of the bin, I did use whiteboard. That's like a dry eraser board. You can get that at your Home Depot. I purchased a two foot by four foot sheet for $10. That's optional. You don't need to spend the additional money on that. Um, you could just simply leave it open. Um, you could use other material that's not as expensive as that. You know, you, you could use some plywood that you have laying around. Uh, anyway, I just wanted a nice, smooth surface so that when, if castings fell down onto this, it, it would be easy to clean off. Alright, so let's take a look up underneath on the inside. There again, the inside from underneath. And the door. Door, again, just very simple, just like the lid. I had some magnets sitting around. Uh, it's optional. You put the door on how you want to do your door. I wanted to use magnets. It's quick, easy. No hinges involved. Uh, hinges really wouldn't work out anyway uh, because the harvester bar that's here, unless you had it, the, the door hinged down. You know, if you had your door hinged down instead of hinge up, that would work. Or if you had a way that it hinged from the sides, but if you ask me, that would be too much trouble. All right. Hey, look, Brock. I got a sky cam. Woo! I'm just playing with you. Anyway, that's it for now. Uh, just a couple of last things. I wanted to give credit where credit's due. Um, a lot of this stuff I did really meditate on and come up with the design of a lot of this. Uh, the idea that I got for the weed eater string that came from a YouTube member called Garbage Guru. Uh, anyways, Garbage Guru has a video of his worm composting bin. And it's nothing like mine besides the fact that I used the weed eater string uh, as the base instead of using something like PVC or other type of uh, tubing. Also, the harvest bar. I got the idea of screws, uh, sort of protruding screws for the harvest bar from a couple of different videos that I saw on YouTube. Uh, one in particular was uh, One Yard Revolution's video on the flow through bin that he made. Uh, I really hope he makes one of these. These are really cool. Um, other than that, that's the only thing. My harvest bar is completely unique, uh, at least from what I've seen out there and the way that it can travel the full length of the bin um, and is actually sort of fixed on that linear track that it's on. I've seen some other people do something similar where they had a bar that was not fixed in the bin but was just a bar that they could scrape along the bottom. Uh, but I always take ideas that I see on on people's channels and I make it my own. I try to think of a, a way that would just really make it work nice for me. So maybe you guys will see something here and you might want to make things different. You might choose not to use sea or maybe you use pine or something else. Um, you know something. Uh, cedar of course if you get slivers it really irritates the skin which is another reason why I went with the liner. Uh, the liner is optional, of course, if you maybe go with a different type of wood. I will be showing in the, the very short future here the actual way that you want to prepare and set up and get your bedding and your worms and everything in a flow-through system. Uh, in particular, this flow-through system. So, uh, anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. 
Uh, thanks once again. Uh, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so that you can see uh, future stuff that we do here. Uh, I'll see you guys next time.